Good morning. I'm holding a book that was written by our son Uziel in honor of his bar mitzvah. And the book is about Uziel's great-grandfather, whose name was Uziel Chazanov, whom he was named after. We know that in Judaism, the tradition is that we name our children after our loved ones who are deceased. In Sephardic tradition, they actually name after the living grandparents. What is the reason why we put such... So this week's Torah portion is called the portion of names. The whole book of Exodus in Hebrew is actually called the book of names. What is significant about names and why is the portion called the book of names? So it's interesting that we all know Moshe Rabbeinu as Moses. Why? Because in this week's parsha it says that when Pharaoh saved him from the Nile, she saw that he was a Jewish baby and she said, I will name him Moshe because Moshe means to draw out from the water because I have drawn him out from the water. But the Talmud says that that wasn't his original name. That was the name that Pharaoh's daughter gave him that we use till today in honor of her heroic deed of rescuing Moshe. But the actual name that his own parents, Amram and Yocheved, gave him was Tuvya. Tuvya means goodness from God. Why did they name him Tuvya? Because the Torah says that when Moshe Rabbeinu was born, the house filled up with light. And so they said, he's a good child, he's goodness from God. And here the Nitziv makes a very interesting observation. The commentary on the Torah, the Nitziv says that if you notice, the book of Shemos, Exodus, begins with the letter Vav, which means and. And these are the names. Why is it the book beginning with the word and? Usually you don't begin a new book with the word and. It's telling us that the second book of the Torah is connected to the first book. And here the Nitziv says, how did the world begin? God said, let there be light. And in this week's Torah portion, the opening story is the birth of Moshe Rabbeinu, and the house was filled with light. And they named him Tuvya because they saw he was good. Says the Nitziv, the first book of the Torah is about the physical creation of the world. The second book of the Torah is about the spiritual purpose of the world. And that's why there are three themes in the book of Shemos. The first one is the exodus of the Jewish people, the birth of the Jewish nation. The second one is the receiving of the Torah at Mount Sinai. The third theme is the building of the tabernacle, the first house of God. And so just like you have a body and a soul, there's the physical and the spiritual in creation. The book of Horatius is about the establishment of the creation of the world and the first families that began humankind and the Jewish nation. The second book is the book of the purpose and the mission of the world and the Jew and every human being. And indeed, that is the idea of a name. The middle letters of the word nishama, soul, is shame. And that's why it's so important to have a Jewish name and to perpetuate the Jewish name. Because while our physical presence of our loved ones, our grandparents, our great-grandparents may not be here, their soul's purpose and mission is carried on through our descendants and so much so that our lives are a continuation of their lives and the choices and the decisions and the life that they led is directly channeled and guiding our own lives and we always remember that by naming them after our loved ones and indeed my great my grandfather Uziel's great-grandfather's name was Uziel which means strength from God and he was a person who was born in 1902 and he showed tremendous strength and resilience to not only fight the communists and remain an observant Jew under the harshest circumstances, but even had to flee from the Nazis. And in this book that Ozil wrote, a soldier of a different kind, tells the story that he was, after he got married in 1925 to his wife Hinda, he was a shochet, a secret underground shochet, ritual slaughterer for those Jews who still ate kosher in the Soviet Union in Russia. And one day he was walking with his 12-inch knife in the square, central square of Samarkand. And he would disguise himself as an artist so people didn't know he was a religious Jew so he shouldn't get sent off to Siberia. He would wear an artist beret and he got a license saying he's an artist and his long beard looked like an artist's beard. And he would always carry around unfinished paintings that he paid someone to make so he could always say he was an artist to the KGB. And suddenly he felt a soldier was following him and he turned around and he saw a high-ranking soldier 
walking behind him. So he picked up his pace and the soldier picked up his pace. And then finally he saw a corner that he was able to dash off into and hide. When the soldier came to the alleyway, he looked in every direction and the soldier started to walk away and his heart started, stopped racing thinking he was safe. But suddenly the soldier came back and started to say, Uziel, Uziel. And he said, who's calling my name? And he came out and he looked and it was his brother Grisha. His brother Grisha had joined the Communist Party and become a soldier while he had gone to yeshiva to become an underground hidden Jew in secrecy to carry on his Yiddishkeit. And brothers were reunited after many years of separation. Today, Uziel's descendants are all over the world carrying on the banner of Judaism and the Torah lifestyle that he, for, that he forged because we are the continuity. We carry the names and the soul's mission of our ancestors. And that is what the meaning of a name is. And therefore, we must make sure that we perpetuate their names and that we lead a life that our children and grandchildren will perpetuate our names.